As recently as three years ago, this hey, go! was in danger of becoming MIA at JMU. My second year here, the um, club was actually in danger of being um, expelled from the program. And uh, I kind of took it upon myself to, uh, to, pick up the, uh, to pick up the club. Chakalos has taken the last three years to rebuild a team he says had been in a rut since 2007. But this is a breakout year for the group. The team now has around 30 members on its roster, though only 10 are considered active players. I'm the type of, I'm the type of captain that looks at the player that is the most driven. But I take any player that's willing to come out and work hard. Starting in the spring, the paintballers will have more of a leg up on the competition. They recently received a donation of 50 blow up bunkers, also called a field. Not many colleges have their own paintball field. So we are one of the very few colleges out there that have our own paintball field uh, donated to us. I think the progress this team has made this year is tremendous and I really think it's going to go a long way in the future. One thing that won't change in the future is why players choose to participate in the sport. I mean, just the adrenaline rush of just like knowing your angles, get, being able to shoot someone, just knowing that what you did and what you worked for just got someone else out. And just the adrenaline rush is just unbeatable. Once you play it, you just can never have enough of it. You really want more. And more is what teammates are looking for from each other as they look forward to the national championships in April. For JMU Today, I'm Taylor Mickleberry. I have a position to come up and shoot him, okay? I think what the foundation of JMU Swimming and Diving is one of sort of family rather than uh, competition first, winning first. So we like to be a family, we like to be a big group, we don't want individuals separating, we just, I think we do better when we're all together and having fun. It's just kind of, you have to think about the team before your own swimming and it's more fun that way. I think we're all really, really close, and um, it's really important to us to be close, and I think it makes us dive better, too. We're really close with the swimmers. Most of the time, they're the only team that's cheering on the diving. Like, the other teams haven't figured it out yet, and we do so much better when they're cheering us on. Yeah, little bear. I want to see that again. Again. If there wasn't my teammates at the CAAs, then I would have been get like best plays. I think the championship was a product of many years of really buying into this dynamic versus this championship happened, now we can be a team. We have a lot of fun. We tend to incorporate a lot of laughter into our practices. I feel like everyone, we all swim faster when we're having fun. Sometimes you, those, they're writing papers while they swim. You know, sometimes they're, you know, checking off what, what needs to get done tonight, or sometimes they're daydreaming about D Hall. But when they're checked in, they're, they're, they're fierce. These women are uh, maybe mildly insane, extremely motivated, phenomenally talented, and very, very driven. It's, it's, it's impressive. After leading the Radford Highlanders to a 241 and 116 record over the last six seasons, Mickey Dean has turned his sights to making the JMU Dukes into a championship caliber team. We have to get out of that mindset of we're a mid-major or you know we need to stay in our place or anything like that. Uh, I, I believe that this can be a program that can be a top 25 program. When Coach Katie Flynn's contract was not renewed this summer, Dean was hired at the end of July and has already made sweeping changes in players' mindsets. We feel like we're making um, advancements 
and getting better. So they're good adjustments that we're making. There are a lot of them though. <laughs> Dean is a native of Rockingham County. He grew up in Elkton and graduated from Spotswood High School. He says being back in the valley makes him closer to family again, but there's a big softball advantage too. I have familiarity with the kids in the community. So it, recruiting wise, we want to make sure that our back door is, is a base for us. And uh, that's something we're going to really work hard on. Despite having his eye on the future, Dean is constantly looking at the team he has on the field today and how they can all transition smoothly to the new game plan. It's always a learning process, and it's not just on their side. I need to learn as well uh, about them. It can't just be about Mickey Dean. It's got to be about JMU. And that's all this offseason has been about as the team readies itself for spring. For Matazone, I'm Taylor Mickleberry. Hey everybody, wow, thank you so much. Paul Ryan's campaign made a stumping stop at the Rockingham County Fairgrounds. More than 2,000 people came out to listen to him speak about topics running the gamut from the situation in Libya to the budget. We just gotta stop spending money we don't have. We literally need to cut spending. We need to get this deficit under control, this budget balance. We need to get this debt under control. Ryan's supporters covered the spectrum from the young to the old, including many JMU students like Kyle Penrose. I think what a lot of what students hear right now is just like those political advertisements you've seen everywhere. And I think, you know, hearing things right from the candidates' mouths, uh, that's really what is important and what's going to make people as educated as they can be. Penrose, like many other JMU students, is voting in his first election. While Ryan didn't specifically mention college students, Mark Obenchain, Virginia State Senator for the 26th District, did. What do you think about the new enthusiasm we're seeing among college students on campuses for conservative values for Paul Ryan and for Mitt Romney across Virginia? That enthusiasm and a general interest in what Ryan had to say is what brought Penrose to the rally. Uh, I feel like coming to a rally, you just get to see the little, like the intangibles, the body language, um, just how they deal with the public, how they deal with, you know, the occasional person that disagrees with them, just how they think off the cuff. And I think that's what makes people, candidates especially, more personable, more relatable to, you know, the average person. The Ryan event marks the second time that a candidate has come through the Harrisonburg area. In 2008, President Barack Obama, then the Democratic candidate for president, came through JMU and spoke at the Convocation Center. For JMU Today, I'm Taylor Mickleberry.